Well, because Elliot Friedman brought this up, I wanted to talk about this here, too. Because it is something that I think you can explore as a Detroit Red Wings fan, although it might not be the most fun conversation to have. So, on Friedman's most recent piece, 32 Thoughts, A Lesson to Learn. By the way, it opens up with a very heartfelt and meaningful few paragraphs talking about Boko Imama, Jordan Subban, as well as Christoph Robek. These were all some of the biggest stories in the hockey world in the past month. And Friedman does a really good job just highlighting everything that went down, everything that needs to go down, why this is such a big deal. Racism sucks, folks. Don't be racist. But ultimately, this entire write-up, by the way, I'll leave a link in the description as always, is an introductory to what is a very deep and juicy 32 thoughts when it comes to NHL rumors. And one of the thoughts that Friedman has is on the Detroit Red Wings. If you scroll down to thought number 11 here on the clock, another situation to keep an eye on. Philip Zadina, Detroit. Steve Eiserman never tips his hand. He can't help but look at it and wonder if it's time for a fresh start. This is our idea. Let's talk today about Detroit Red Wings Philip Zadina and how exactly he's fared so far throughout his career and whether or not a fresh start should, could, or would be on the table. Now, I'll preface this entire conversation by saying this. Philip Zadina is 22 years old. Do NHL players usually, and I say usually because there are some players that go out there and actually do really well immediately right out the gate. You know, of course, Connor McDavid is probably the best example of that. But do most NHL players usually start doing their best at around 21, 22? I'd say probably not. I'd say it takes a while for players to become the best versions of themselves. Maybe that's 24, 25, 26, 27 years old. There is a little bit of an extended time frame that says, okay, this is usually when a player is at their best, of course, bearing a few exceptions to the rule. And Philip Zadina being 22 years old means that he's got himself a boatload of time to become what a lot of Red Wings fans wanted Philip Zadina to become. Now, he's making 800 grand. He's on his entry-level deal. It's signed until 2022, so it does expire this upcoming offseason. There will need to be another contract extension in place for Sedina, and the 6-foot, 196-pound left-handed winger is currently at 11 points in 40 games played this season. Do the math on that. It's about 22, 23 points on the year and 8 goals. Which, if I'm gonna be honest, is not great. And if you told any Red Wings fan that was super ecstatic to draft Sedina back in 2018 when they got him sixth overall because he slipped, hey, by the time Philip Sedina is 22 years old, it's gonna be 2021, 2022, he's going to have spent three seasons already with the Red Wings, and he's only gonna have about 22 points on the year. How would you feel about that? If... Back then, in 2018, I took a time machine and I told you that, hey, he's going to be on pace for 22 points by the time he's 22 years old. Honestly, based off the reception and the hype that Philip Zadina had back when he was draft eligible in Halifax in 2017-18, I would have been pretty disappointed if I heard that. Like, if we take that hypothetical time machine back to 2018 and we talk about what exactly the world saw in Philip Zadina... This was a guy that, around December of 2017-ish, was challenging Andrei Svechnikov for that second overall spot. His world junior performance in 2017-2018 was so good, especially for an underage player. Seven goals in seven games, eight total points for Team Czechia. He went out there and was absolutely spectacular, and he showed off just his sniping ability. He could score goals left, right, and center. He could score snipes. Sure, there was the odd clip of him missing an open net once in a while, but Philip Zadina was so gosh darn good that there's a reason why he was the number one prospect for all forwards in some people's eyes. Now, that didn't last, because by the end of it, it was Andrei Svechnikov who went second. Philip Sedina actually dropped to six because Montreal and Arizona both wanted centers, so they took Kotkaniemi and Hayden. Ottawa went with what was on the board, and they took Brady Kachuk, who was seen as a guy that could have gone a lot higher than he did, but he just went fourth, so there you go. But Philip Zadina, in a lot of people's eyes, had number one winger potential. There's a reason why he was battling with Svechnikov a few months before the draft for that second overall spot. And 
What that means is he's probably on pace to getting 40 goals in a season one time and maxing out as a consistent 60-70 point winger. A guy who could absolutely just take it and snipe it on the rush endlessly. A guy who could make plays. A guy who could dangle the pants off of guys and then snipe it afterwards. He was just that kind of versatile scoring winger that a lot of people saw in the QMJHL tearing things up. Now, to Jeff Blaschel's credit, he has developed a side to Philip Zadina that a lot of people didn't really think was able to exist, and that was his two-way ability. Philip Zadina right now with the Red Wings is a pretty good two-way player, and he's got some pretty good defensive instincts that he's honed over the past few years, and it's really served him well at the NHL level. It's just, as Friedman points out, there has indeed been somewhat of a disappointing run for Zadina when it comes to overall point production, and I don't think it's completely healthy to go out there and ignore it as we have been the past few years. We have the benefit of the doubt that the Red Wings are a young team. They don't need Zadina to be as good as he could be right now. He's only 22 years old. He's going to get better. But how long do you have to wait until that better becomes a reality? How long are you going to force yourself to sit down with Zadina and say, okay, no, we've got a few more years left. We just got to wait. Oh, he's only producing at a 20 point pace. That's all right. We just got to wait. How long is too long? And so, for Elliot Friedman to come out here and even bring up the idea of a Philip Zadina trade, having him go to someplace else and have a change of scenery, maybe get some more goals in a new system or whatever, I want you to tell me in the comment section below, is that something you would actually see value in? Depending on what the return is, let's just imagine the return is somewhere in the realm of a first round pick, maybe even just a tad more than that, like add on a third or something, because at the end of the day, Philip Zadina... Honestly, if you tried to get, like, a whole bunch of stuff for this guy based off of what he could be, which is that 40-goal, 60-70-point winger in his prime, I definitely don't think that Philip Zadina has shown off that much at the NHL level to the point where he actually could be worth that of a 40-goal score in the National Hockey League. He's just kind of worth what he is, a first-round talent who is struggling and who is potentially just a trade or two away from igniting his number one ceiling. Now, you gotta remember, even guys in the past, like Leish Anderson, he was a 2017 guy, so drafted a year before Philip Zadina, he didn't even go for a first-round pick. Granted, there was a lot more drama surrounding him, so there's different circumstances for sure, but I definitely do want to hear your thoughts in the comments section. Should you trade Philip Zadina? Would you want to do it? Not for the sake of giving up on this guy, per se, but because maybe he could just use a change of scenery. Maybe this is the kind of player that needs to play in another system, get those jitters out and actually get some new blood in there to really fulfill what it was that he was supposed to be back when he was drafted in 2018. Because as I noted, if you told me three years ago, okay, no, it's 2022 right now, four years ago, what Philip Sedina is today, I honestly would be disappointed. Like, you tell me what Andre Svechnikov is doing right now? Hey, that guy's pulled off the Michigan goal twice. He's gotten like 60, 70 point seasons under his belt. He has been fantastic. I'm like, yeah, that is what Andre Svechnikov was supposed to be. There's a reason why people labeled him as the next Malkin. And there's a good amount of evidence that supports the idea that he has gone out there and fulfilled what it is he was supposed to be. And he's only 21, 22 years old. So, like, there definitely is so much more room for a guy like Andre Sveshnikov to grow and develop. Same with Quinn Hughes. He's gone out there and absolutely shattered expectations, in my opinion. Brady Kachuk, same thing. Rasmus Dahlin, while he had a great start and a sort of poor last year, this season he's been putting it back together. Philip Sedina, alongside of the guys like KK and Hayden, these guys have not really been showing off what made them top picks in the draft just yet. Sure, the two-way side to Zadina's game is nice, but I think everybody can agree that we all thought he would be a little bit more at this point right? So, talk to me in the comments what do you think about the idea of a Philip Zadina trade. If you do trade away Philip Zadina, what do you think you realistically get back in a trade, and what would you want in a trade? Those are two separate questions. What do you realistically think? What do you want? Because what do you realistically think 
it could vary, right? Like, some people might say, okay, we could probably get a first for Zadina. Others might say, okay, no, you're not getting a first for Zadina. Like, he is a 20-point winger at the NHL level. Sure, he's young, but he's got an expiring contract. He's going to need monetary commitments soon. You're not getting more than a second or something for this guy. Some other people might think that. So, let me know in the comments all your thoughts about this idea. I hope you enjoyed this with Rosh Rolls 99. And, bye.